All right, welcome back to Sunday School, everybody. And today it's going to be an interesting Bible study. It'll be a little deep, a little fun. Um, no, I'm not trying for clickbait or anything. But fallen angels, demons, giants, and clones. Fallen angels, demons, giants, and clones. We're going to look at that today, not because of what the day is. <laughs> Do you know what today is? Well, I didn't realize till several days ago. So I was already planning to talk about this and then Lo and behold, today is Halloween. So this kind of goes along with it, but that wasn't my plan, okay? I just want to let you know, I don't celebrate holidays or holy days. That's where the word comes from. And Halloween, All Hallows Eve, it's, they're calling it hallowed, which means holy. So it's holy to them, not to us, amen? It's not a day that I like. I keep our kids close to us and indoors on days like this. So today we're going to go to Genesis chapter 6, and I just want to look at a couple things and maybe ask the question, what if, a little bit, but also look at how the devil works. In the last couple of Sundays, the last two or three that we've done, will kind of all tie back into what we're going to look at today. So Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, now who are the sons of God in the Old Testament? Angels. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Which would be what? Giants. Well, where do demons come from? And what are these fallen angels? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to tie all this together today. And then we're going to look at clones. And you know, we have been programmed. A lot of what the world is doing, a lot of what they do in, in Hollywood, it's called programming. TV programs. <laughs> programming. And so it's amazing to me how the last, what, 40, 50 years, it's all been about UFOs and, and all these Halloween demon movies that are scary, man. I don't watch these horror films. They're horrible. And then you got a lot of things about giants, you know, and then clones, Star Wars, the Clone Wars and things like that. They just keep giving you a steady diet of this stuff. Why? Could it be we're going to be seeing this soon? Maybe after the rapture, they'll see it. I hope it's not now, but it definitely appears to me that the devil has started a certain way in Genesis 6. And that has always been his plan, and he's always tried to do that plan. And so here in the end, he's going to repeat his plan. That's the way I see it. So here we find in Genesis chapter 6, fallen angels coming together with human women and producing giants. Now let me say, I believe that that literally happened. There's a lot of people out there that show that they are apostates. Mm -hmm. Because they go, well, I can't believe that an angel and a woman could have a baby. So that must be the sons of Seth and the sons of Cain and things like that. No, it says they took them wives. Yep. Who took themselves wives? Fallen angels. Now, I don't know how that works, but we're going to get into that, my thought about it. But first of all, what are angels? All right, we've got to turn to a lot of scriptures today. I want to show you as much as I can about this subject. This is something a lot of people don't talk about. They shy away from. Right. But it's real, and the reason I think we should look at it is so we know the enemy. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14. What are angels? Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14 clearly tells us that an angel is a spirit being. Okay? Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says this. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So it's talking about the angels, and it calls them ministering spirits. So an angel is a spirit. An angel is a spirit being. But somehow, somehow, an angel can come and appear as a man. All throughout the Bible, I wish I had time to take you to every passage. Let's go real quick to Genesis 19 as one example. But there are other places. For example, remember Samson? In the Bible, Samson's daddy Manoah and Samson's mother, they saw the angel of the Lord. And you know what she says? She says, a man visited me. <laughs> Why didn't she say, a big old angel with wings visited me? Why did she say a man? Because all throughout the Bible, angels appear as men. And they look a lot like human beings. Now, Genesis chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom. Now, for sake of time, I won't read the whole passage. But look what it says here in verse 5. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, 
Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. So they didn't say, where are those angels with the wings? Mm -hmm. So it sounds like in the Bible, when an angel appears, it appears as a man. It doesn't have wings. Right. Matter of fact, it, it, Hebrews, we read about, Paul says, some of you have entertained angels unawares. Yeah, that's right. That an angel could appear in such a way that you didn't know that was an angel. And later you're like, was that? I don't know. There's something different about that guy. Mm -hmm. But they appear as men. Now, if they can appear as a man, somehow then an angel must be able to take on somehow an ability to be able to produce giants right. with women. Now, my thought about that, and this is kind of weird, but this ties in with Halloween and everything, would be what? Well, would be that somehow maybe they can take in their body something that would make them fall because they're called fallen angels. And that when they fall, then they become more like men and somehow they produce seed. What is life? What is temporal life? Do you remember? The life of the flesh is in the blood. We have all these stories. They say, oh, it's mythology, all this mythology of, of, of vampires. What do they do? They drink blood. Is it possible? I don't know. Like I said, there'd be a lot of what ifs today, but I'm just kind of connecting the dot. That the way an angel falls is that he could drink blood. Could it be that maybe some of this stories that we think is mythology and made up, maybe there's a little bit of history and it's based in history? Do you remember the Greek mythology? What is Greek mythology all about? All these Greek gods going around fornicating all the time. <laughs> well, that's what it says in Genesis 6. These angels, gods, little g, that's what they're called in the Bible. And there's a passage of scripture where it says, you say that ye are gods, but ye shall die as men. Yep. So there's a way that, a, that an angel can fall and then he'll die later. So that's an interesting thing. So there's a lot in the Bible that we don't think about. And a lot of people, they like to talk about demons. Where do demons come from? Have you ever thought about that? Do you know our King James Bible does not tell us where demons come from? But when Jesus comes, he starts casting out demons and he talks about them. So they're real, but where do they come from? Well, a lot of people think they're just fallen angels. And then when that angel's body dies, then the spirit comes out and that's a demon. Well, you know, I can understand their thinking of that, but... Do you realize the offspring, the giants, right. what happens to them? Yep. So we're going to get into that today. I'm going to try to talk about that. But we looked at what an angel is. So an angel is a spirit, right? So an angel is a spirit. What is a human? All right, let's look at a human being. An angel is a spirit that is able to take a body. So he's a spirit, but he can also have a body. Well, a human being is a body soul and spirit. Go to uh, the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 23. In 1 Thessalonians 5 23, the Bible is very clear, unless you're what, a Presbyterian or one of those people that believes in a dichotomy instead of a, a tripart being? Well, the Bible says God made us in His image. God is three, but He's one. Because these three are one, the Bible says. So if we're created in the image of God, then we must consist of three. Right. So in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the Bible tells us very clear, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we human beings, we consist of a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now a fallen angel would be a spirit... Right? Angels are spirits that somehow took a body, but he took a body by falling. And now he's got that body he has to live in. Now, if you take these two and you take this angel, which is a spirit and a body. If you take this angel and this angel somehow falls, like I said, I think he falls by probably taking blood somehow. Um, you ever see that movie in Hollywood with that Nicolas Cage fellow? What's it called, honey? Because your pastor mentioned that one time. City of Angels. I'm not recommending you watch movies, but what a weird movie. It takes place in Los Angeles. Well, that means the angels in Spanish. And it's about a guy who's an angel following this woman around. And then he, he meets another guy that used to be an angel that's married with kids. And he goes, well, all you have to do is just fall. And so he wants to get with this woman. So he goes up to the tall building and he just goes and falls backwards and falls. <laughs> And then he wakes up and he's all bloody, but he's alive. And that's how they said he fell as a fallen angel. And then he got together with this woman. Genesis chapter 6 from Hollywood. Isn't that wild? Weird, weird. So we look at this and if there's an angel and he's a spirit in a body, and here's a woman and this angel wants to get together with this woman. And the woman is what? She's a spirit, a soul, and a body. All right. What do they have in common? Well, they both have a spirit. And they both have a body. 
The only difference is that's got a soul and that one doesn't. So if they were to produce offspring, and I believe they did according to Genesis 6, what would they create? They would create a being that is a spirit, no soul, but a, but a spirit that has a body. So they would create a spirit being that has a fleshly body, but no soul. So it can't be saved, can it? Because it doesn't have a soul. I think that's where demons come from. And I think the Bible's pretty clear about that because Noah's flood came and destroyed the earth. You think it killed some of the giants? Yeah, killed, killed them all. But you know what? The Bible says there were some more after that. Remember Goliath? We're going to look at all that today. I want to get into that. I think this is kind of fun. So what is a giant? Okay, first of all, we ask, what is an angel? An angel is a spirit that can somehow take a body, appear in a body, but somehow can fall and get into a carnal body. A human is a body, soul, and spirit. All right, so what is a giant? Let's go to Numbers chapter 33. Now, again, there's some people out there that claim to be Christians. They're pastors. They're preachers. And they say, I don't believe in giants. <laughs> And when they go to Genesis 6 and they read Men of Renown, they say what that means is they were just famous people. Mm. No, the Bible tells us about giants, right. literal gigantic yeah. beings yep. that are huge. What is that? Is that just some, oh no, they were just born with some, you know, DNA problem or something that made them really tall. No, you have an angel, which is, uh, the Bible says, a little lower than the angels. So humans are a little lower than angels. So if an angel mated with a woman, wouldn't that produce a body, but that would be bigger because they're higher up. And so it makes sense that they're literally giants in the Bible. Let's look at uh, Numbers chapter, did I say 33? I meant 13. Numbers 13, 33. Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33. And look at what it says in our King James Bible. Here are the people of Israel after the Exodus trying to go take over the land and they are a witness of what they saw in the land and they saw giants and look what they say. You say, well, they're exaggerating. Ah, well, let's look at it. Numbers chapter 13, verse 33. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak. <laughs> Anakim Skywalker. Remember that? In Star How weird that they always go to the Bible and use words from that to make their movies. I wonder if they know somebody that knows all this stuff. I don't know. Could it be Satan? <laughs> you know, uh, so it says Anak. Isn't that interesting? And uh, he says here, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. So it's like, we felt like grasshoppers looking up at those things being that big. So I think there were giants in the Bible. As a matter of fact, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 3. The Bible gives us names of giants and literally tells us how tall they were. So I don't see how anybody could claim to be a preacher and say, there's no such thing as giants. All you've done is showed me that you haven't read your Bible. Because the Bible tells us that they existed and how tall they were. All right, now these were really tall back there. If you're the size of a grasshopper, you'd really be looking up. But look at this, Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 11. Deuteronomy 3, 11. And it says here in Deuteronomy chapter 3 and verse 11, For only Og, king of Bashan, remained of the remnant of giants. Behold, his bedstead was a bedstead of iron. Is it not in Rabbath? of the children of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length thereof, and four cubits the breadth of it, after the cubit of a man. All right, so nine cubits. How much is a cubit? Well, some people say a cubit is 18 inches. To me, that makes sense. You know why? That's from here to here. And that is six plus six plus six. Six is the number of man, Revelation 13. Others say there's the Egyptian cubit, which is, that cubit is, they say seven plus seven plus seven, or 21 inches. So somewhere between 18 to 21 inches is a cubit. Are we measuring from man? Or are we measuring from angels? <laughs> That's the thing. Are we measuring from giants? Giants are bigger. But let's say it's 18 inches. Well, you take 18 inches, multiply that by 9. He's 9 cubits. You get 162, divide that by 12, you get 13.5 feet tall. Does that sound like a giant to you? Do you realize if you walked up to that guy, you'd be like below his waist? You'd be like, <laughs> That's like twice the size of what you are. I mean, what, the tallest people in the world that we, we've seen, there was Robert Alton, was eight foot, so that's pretty tall. But let's say six, six foot five, maybe almost seven feet, that's pretty tall. This is almost twice that, or in some cases over twice that. So two times the size of, of most people we look at as tall today. Well, what if it was uh, 21 inches? Well, it comes out to about 15.75 feet. Could you imagine a being that's 15.75 feet? Let's go over here to um, 
2 Samuel chapter 21. 2 Samuel 21, 16. So like I said, the Bible gives us names of giants and tells us exactly how tall they were. How interesting is that? So 2 Samuel 21, 16. So those people that go around and say there's no such thing as giants. Um, yeah, you, you just exposed yourself right. as number one, not a Bible believer. And number two is someone who hasn't even read the Bible. Yeah. Okay. In 2 Samuel 21, 16, we read, And Ishbi Benob, what a funny name, Ishbi Benob, was one of the sons of the giant. Wait a minute, so giants can have kids too? That's kind of weird. So I guess a giant and another giant can come together and have another giant. They'd probably be a little shorter than the, both parents, or you never know, maybe it's taller. I, I don't know, there's a lot of questions, but it is interesting. And it says there in verse 16, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight. He being girded with the new sword, thought to have slain David. All right, so we have this guy who wanted to slay David. Now, I don't know what a shekel of brass weighs, but I found a shekel of iron. I wonder if it's the same. So 300 shekels is about 7.5 pounds. Others say, no, no, it's twice that. It's about 15 pounds. So I don't know how to do that because I'm not a Jew and I don't know the shekel weight of brass exactly. But I looked all over the Internet and they said somewhere between 8 pounds almost and 15 pounds. And that's a spear. You all seen a spear? A spear is usually about like that long. That It doesn't weigh probably a pound or two. So if a guy's got one that's 7 pounds, you could barely pick that thing up. You'd be like, oh, pff, and trying to throw it. What if it was 15 pounds? Well, if a guy's 15 foot tall, that's nothing to him, mm -hmm. right? right? So the Bible is very clear. There were giants in what these giants are. Now, let's go to 2 Samuel 21, 20. And look at this. There's something peculiar about giants. Very peculiar about them that, that helps you identify them. Did I spell giants wrong? I did. Yeah, it's spelled this way. Giants. So there's something peculiar about giants. Now, look at this here. In 2 Samuel 21, 20. And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature. Sounds like a giant to me. That had on every hand six fingers and on every foot six toes. Four and twenty in number. And he also was born to the giant. Mm -hmm. Now look down at verse 22. These four were born to the giant in Gath. Do you remember Goliath? Do you know Goliath was born in Gath? Yep. Do you realize there were five giants? Yep. Because whenever David went out there and slew Goliath, it says he went down to the brook and he picked up five right. stones. You ever read your Bible? And when you read it and when you see the whole thing, you know what? That shows me David was so confident. He's like, I'm going to kill that sucker and I'm going after the other four too. That's what he was thinking when he picked up those five stones. Whew, what a blessing. Amen. So he killed Goliath. But what's so weird about a giant? They've got six fingers and they've got six toes. You know, still in society, there's some people that are born sometimes with six fingers, six toes. Now, people like to call the giants, and this is the term they use because they get this from, from the Hebrew. I don't like to run to the Hebrew, but all over the Internet, when you talk about this stuff, the word they use is Nephilim. Nephilim is the Hebrew word. There's also Raphamim or something else, but usually Nephilim is the one used for giants. So Nephilim. So Nephilim were the offspring of the fallen angels. So giants are huge, but they're also not 100% human. Right. So somebody is messing with the DNA of man. Who would that be? That would be Satan. Mm -hmm. And so Satan has been active since the very beginning, Genesis chapter 6. So let's go and look at some things here, because there was DNA corruption and manipulation back then. Mm -hmm. That's why God sent the flood. Let's go to Luke chapter 17. And we see the flood coming because of the corruption. Right. And look at what it says in Luke 17. I find this very interesting. Um, remember the context. Right? A lot of times we'll quote this verse, but uh, I always, you know, didn't think about this when I'm quoting it. Look what it says in Luke chapter 17 and verse 26 and 27. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. And everybody's like, yeah, yeah, like it was in Noah's day. Well, it's going to be like when Jesus comes back. But look at the next verse. Verse 27. They did eat, they drank, they married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. We always read that, and we say, yeah, all those people, they were marrying a whole bunch. The context is these things were marrying these things. 
That's, the, that's who was marrying. So they were corrupting man's DNA. God made man and created them in his image, wanting them to be his. And the devil comes in and goes, well, I want them to be mine. Mm -hmm. So the devil can't create, so he procreated. That's the word we use. <laughs> they came together and he procreated his own race. Yeah. So you had God's race and the devil's race. Mm -hmm. And the devil's going after them and trying to get more to make more of a bigger race. And I wonder how many giants he had before the flood. I wonder how many people in the earth he corrupted their DNA. Well, let's go back to Genesis chapter 6, because the Bible says the whole world, except for maybe eight of them. Hmm, isn't that something? Go back to Genesis chapter 6, and I won't read verse 1 through 4 again right now, but that's what we just read, verse 1 through 4, talking about all this. But now go down to verse 12. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt. For all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. So through DNA manipulation, the devil corrupted yeah. what God intended. Mm -hmm. And he got into man and started changing man. That is awful, isn't it? I don't want anybody to change the way God made me. That's why I don't want anybody manipulating my DNA. Do you know they can do that nowadays? They have a thing called CRISPR. Have you ever heard of CRISPR? And, and they have mapped the whole sequence or coding of man's DNA. And now they're saying through a thing called CRISPR, they can manipulate and change some things. You want blue eyes and you've got green eyes? Well, they can supposedly, I don't know if they're quite there with that technology, but it sounds like that's what they want. And they say we're not far away, that they can change your, isn't there a song, don't that make your blue eyes green or something? I don't know. But it's what they want to do. They want to start changing you. Mm -hmm. Well, God made you who you are. Isn't that kind of saying, God, I don't like what you did. I'm going to change it. Isn't that really awful <laughs> to go against God's will? Is it God's will to change man's DNA? No. I don't think so. Because the one behind it is the devil. Yep. So I look at all this and I go, okay, fallen angels, giants. Now demons, where do demons come from? Well, we'll get to that here too in a minute. But uh, I think it all ties together. So let's go over here to 2 Peter chapter 2. And then we'll go to 1 Peter. So what happened to these angels? Okay, over here, here we have the cross. Here we have the law. Well, over here is Adam and Eve. After Adam and Eve, well, we had Noah. And so this is all taking place in the time of Noah, and then the flood comes. And the flood came so that God could start over with a race of people that had their DNA the way He intended. So the flood came as the judgment for changing man's DNA. So what happened to the fallen angels? Well, God took them and put them somewhere as a judgment. And look what it says in 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 4. 2 Peter 2 and verse 4 and 5. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. Mm -hmm. So here is part of the judgment. Not only did God send the flood to kill all those that weren't the right ones. He saved eight. He saved Noah's family. He took those fallen angels, it sounds like, and put them down here into hell. Interesting. All right, now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 3. And it talks more about this. So they all knew this. The early disciples knew this. Yep. I find that interesting because the Bible doesn't tell us much about it. Now there's another book out there that talks a lot about it called the book of Enoch. And people say, should I read the book of Enoch? I go, no. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's weird. There's like four or five places in it that to me looks like somebody just erased it and just started writing other stuff in. It, it doesn't make sense. It has these fallen angels coming over to Enoch and saying, please ask God to save us. <laughs> you know, it's like, why didn't they? Well, I mean, it's just a weird book. Yeah. But it does talk about where demons come from. And it says there was only four of the fallen angels. And you think about that for a minute. Over in the book of Revelation, there's four angels down here that are appointed for a day and a time and an hour that they're going to come out. So is there some truth in Enoch? Maybe. The Bible quotes it in Jude a little bit, gives a little bit of as it says in the book of, or whatever. But be careful. Don't go to books outside the King James Bible. OK, that's what I'm saying. Please be careful. Don't take as doctrine any other book. OK, and I'm not doing that today. I'm not teaching what that says. I'm finding this in the Bible itself. 
And it says here in 1 Peter chapter 3, starting there in verse 18, here's the gospel in one verse, amen, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, how? Shed his blood. The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened, that means brought to life, so resurrected by the Spirit. By which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Hmm. So those fallen angels that were down there, which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. How long did he wait? 120 years. We saw that while the ark was a preparing wherein few, that is eight souls were saved by water. So here are these spirits mentioned and they're in prison. They're down there below the earth. So now let's go back to Genesis chapter four. We're going to try to get all this together. I think it's fun to talk about all this, but it's also kind of creepy and scary. And well, what better day to talk about it than on Halloween, I guess. But let's get it from a Bible perspective, because the world's giving you all this scary stuff from the devil's perspective. And I think the devil is revealing to people his truth. Hey, you can be as gods. Wasn't that what those were? The gods, those giants of old were the gods of ancient mythology. So that's what the devil wants. He wants to come to you and say, hey, if you'll trust me, I'll make you a God. But he wants to corrupt you. We don't want to be corrupted. We that are Christians. So Genesis chapter six and verse four. Now, what have we seen so far? We've seen that these fallen angels, they were put down here in this area. All right. So at the flood, part of the judgment was they were put down there. Well, all the bodies of the giants must have died. Right. So what was left? Their spirit just right. wandering around. Yep. Now, I personally think that's what demons are. That's right. The disemboweled spirits of the giants. Yep. So they were all destroyed. So how on earth can we go to 2 Samuel and find giants again in the time of David? Uh, well, let's look at this passage here again in Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4. And look what it says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. All right. The days before the flood. Then the flood came. Now look what it says. And also after that. Right. So, oh boy, we have angels falling over here. And then after the flood, we have some angels falling again. Mm -hmm. That must be where guys like Goliath came from yep. and those kind of people. So the question is, can they still fall today? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But uh, if you ever hear about how our troops went over to Afghanistan, supposedly, I, I say supposedly because I don't know. But they supposedly said that they found giants in caves in Kandahar, Afghanistan, and that our troops fought those giants. That's weird. And by the way, the giants all throughout history, all the history of giants, like in England and other places, they had a taste for human blood. Mm -hmm. hmm. Is that how they got their body by tasting human blood? It's very strange. What is that? Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman, said the giant. And he's going to go, you know, eat him. What is this if it's not somehow based in fact? Mm -hmm. And yet it's been perverted. But yet in the Bible, we can look at it and we say, oh, I know what that is. Right. Do you believe the Bible? I do. Now, I was going to take you to these passages. I don't have time. But Goliath, 1 Samuel 17, 4, if you're taking notes. 2 Samuel 21, 19, the brother of Goliath. Like I told you, there was five of them. Yep. Uh, 2 Samuel 21, 22, these four were born to a giant. But it talks about how tall Goliath was. He was six cubits and a span. So if we go by 18 inches, and I don't know what a span would be, maybe six inches, because that's, you know, he was basically nine foot six inches, almost 10 foot tall. So that sounds a little shorter than the 13 to 15 foot tall. So maybe on this side, the world's changed. Now they're not as tall as they were before the flood. I don't know, but there's some things changing here. But after the flood, there were giants. Yep. That can't be denied if you read your Bible and believe it. So again, giants were not 100% human, so they didn't have a soul. So if a giant dies, the spirit that's inside that body is released. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think are demons or devils. Yep. Now the Bible doesn't use the word demon. Our King James Bible says devil. Right. And I think that's the right word because can these things be saved? Nope. Salvation is of the soul. If they don't have a soul, then can they be saved? Nope. So you got to wonder about that. You know, and I'm sure they're like, well, it wasn't my fault. I didn't ask to be born. You know, I'm sure they're like that. But the Bible calls them wicked spirits, evil spirits. But we use the word demon. Why? Well, devil is a better word because that's evil. The ancient Greeks, they would use the word demon as any spirit. So an angel or a devil could be a demon. So new versions of the Bible, a lot of them change it to demon. That's a problem because now you could say, no, it's not a bad spirit. 
And a lot of people in the world that they say, I'm led by a spirit, my channel guide and things like that. And we know it's a devil leading them, but they say, no, it's a good spirit. And sometimes they're deceived into thinking it's an angel. By the way, there was this guy named Edgar Casey. You ever heard of That's Edgar right. Casey? Edgar Casey said he was in contact with spirits that talked to him. And you say, what's the name of the spirit? A lot of times they were names of giants <laughs> in, in old history. And you're like, hmm, starting to put the pieces together here. We're like, wow. So could these spirits of the giant, once the giant dies, could that be a demon? It's starting to make sense that, yeah, that, that makes sense. So the body dies, then the spirit is free to roam. And look what it says here, Matthew chapter 10. So devils are unclean spirits. Jesus shows up and all these unclean spirits are all over and they're doing bad stuff. And Jesus deals with them. Why? Because Jesus is God manifest in the flesh. So God can see the spirit world and the physical world at the same time. Now, these are in a different plane, a different dimension. I don't know how to, to even describe it, but they're spiritual. So they're in the spirit world and in their body. They were in the physical world. So they were in both. Now they're only in one. So they're staying in that spirit world. And now they're coming over and possessing the spirits of humans. Yep. And so there was a lot of demonic possession taking place. And Jesus would see these spirits inside the people and he would cast them out. Matthew chapter 10, and verse one. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. Out of what? Out of people. So wouldn't that make sense that the giant was born and he has a body, but then he dies and then he just looks down. There's his dead body and he's just kind of floating. He's like, well, now what? He's got nothing to do. And the devil comes, and goes, you're one of mine. Follow me. And he teaches them how to do evil things. And they're looking for a new body to get into. That's what unclean spirits are. They are wicked. They are evil. They are ungodly. They are not what God produced. God did not want that to be made. The devil made that. Right. So I believe that's where demons come from. A couple more verses here. Look at Mark chapter 5. Um, this is just a personal belief on my part. But uh, are they going to live forever? Hmm. Um, it seems like, what it sounds like in the Bible, is that demons are getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And I wonder if eventually it just, they just cease to exist. I don't know. I don't, maybe they exist forever in hell with the devil. Maybe that too. But in the Bible, they went from being a giant in a body to in the spirit world, they're really, really tiny. Because look what happens here. This is really weird. Go to Mark chapter 5 and verse 8 and 9. Mark 5, 8. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And what happened? Well, verse 13. Look at this. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out. You read in one place, there was a thousand you read in another place, there were actually two men, so there were 2,000. So a 1,000 demons can be in one person? They'd have to be pretty small, wouldn't they? <laughs> Isn't that weird? And then what did they do? Um, and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea where they were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. So this is weird because these things can get into a body of an animal. Mm -hmm. That's right. And an animal can be possessed by a demon. Mm -hmm. Isn't that weird? Now, can a Christian be possessed? No. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. The Bible says when we're saved, Ephesians 1.13, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So I don't see that a devil can come in the same place where the Holy Spirit is. But I can see oppression yeah. and, and giving Christians depression. Yeah. But I don't see a Christian, a true born again child of God being possessed. Right. Because that spirit of a Christian is occupied. Yeah. And it's like, no vacancy. No, no, you're not allowed here, devil. Okay? But the devil can sure oppress you mm -hmm. from outside. So demons can get inside of people that aren't saved. That is creepy. Let's go to Matthew chapter 12 real quick. And Jesus talks about this. But he never says where they come from. It's like you understand. So maybe there was a book of Enoch at one time that the Jews knew and they knew all this. But for some reason in our King James Bible, it doesn't tell us where demons come from. All we know is that the Bible always talks about them in the New Testament as unclean, wicked spirits that aren't good. So the best thing to do is stay away from them. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 43 through 45. 1243 says this. When the unclean spirit, now this is Jesus speaking. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Hmm. Then he saith, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. And when he is... Come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. 
Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. Now, why would the spirit be wicked? Because in the body as a giant, he was already wicked. Mm -hmm. He probably already knew he was of the devil. So he's he's already he's unsavable. He's unredeemable because he's he's from Satan. So he's already evil. Now he's just a spirit being. He's still evil. And it says here, he then goeth he and taketh, and probably what he's doing is he's fornicating, because giants have babies. So all he cares about is the depravity of the flesh. Right. And now he can't feel that anymore because he doesn't have a body. So he gets into someone who's not safe so he can do things that he can feel. Yep. Isn't that, I mean, I, I don't have time to tell you the story about the demon-possessed woman I met on a bus one time. What a weird story. But she told me about her husband, her lover, I guess. I don't think they were married and how they got a demon. And she says, I can't describe to you the feeling of what it felt like when it entered into me. It was just pure hate and pure spite and pure just wanting to, to, to make you feel pain or make you feel pleasure just to where you couldn't even take it. It was just, just, just thinking about these things. They're just pure evil. Hmm. But anyway, the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. So... The Bible teaches that a person can get a demon or several demons yeah. or up to a thousand, maybe even more. Mm -hmm. And so what are they? Well, it makes sense that they would be the offspring of the fallen angels. So if you don't believe that angels can fall and do that with women, then you have no explanation of where giants come from. Right. And many Christians go, I don't believe in giants. OK, then I guess you don't believe in demons. There's no such thing as demons. <laughs> There are. I get phone calls all the time from people claiming to be demon possessed. Mm -hmm. And um, they tell me, you know, I'm, I, I want to get saved. But this demon's laughing at me, mocking me, saying I can't get and things like that. They are real. These things are. But the Bible says that the blood of Jesus is more powerful. Yeah, right. And I don't have time to get into that and how to deal with that. But now let's talk about this. Clones. So the devil is over here and he from the beginning was the great manipulator of DNA. And he's producing corrupt DNA and he's producing giants. I personally think he's also producing hybrid animal stuff. Yeah. Today we call that chimera. But you know the word satyr is in the Bible? Yeah. Do you know what a satyr is? Half human, half goat. Right. And I've seen on the internet the skull of man with goat's horn. You can see that. They probably would have had horns like a goat. They were half human, half. So all these old ancient mythology things, they were, oh, that's just not real. You look at the Bible and go, yeah, that's possibly could have been real. Um, they're centaur. Half human, half horse. And people say, well, that can't happen today. Well, no, if you go and you do something with an animal, that's called bestiality. And I've not seen those animals being able to do that. But if you know how to mix DNA with CRISPR and things like that, then you can have something like that. And there's some people saying today they're, they're making things like that in certain places in laboratories and things. So <laughs> isn't that weird? So when you look at all this, what is a clone? Well, do you remember, was it in the 80s or 90s when scientists came out and openly said, we finally learned how to clone, and the first thing they cloned was a sheep. A sheep, a type of a Christian. Isn't that weird? We're sheep, aren't we? And so they say we clone. So they can clone. But what is a clone? They use DNA of something that already exists in order to make a replicant or an exact copy of that, and that's what they call a clone. So they're making the body of whatever's already a body. Does that make it a soul? If they were able to clone human beings, they could make another Robert Breaker, would that Robert Breaker have my soul in it? It would just be basically like a beast, really. It'd be like an animal because it has no soul. It would be almost like one of these things. Now, is it going to have a spirit in it? Well, all they did was clone the body. There's no mother and father. Maybe they used a mother to incubate it or whatever, but I don't even think it would have a spirit. It's just a body. And a lot of people are saying, now, how's this tie into UFOs? <laughs> Isn't that fun? Well, we don't have time to go there, but I think that UFOs are fallen angels yeah. that have somehow, because of all their vast understanding, know how to make you know, vessels that will travel and things like that. And the little alien grays, you know, I think they've made those in laboratories and they use those for bodies, for vessels, for the demons to get in. And I don't have time to get into all that. I'll start sounding crazy, won't I? But when I was in Bible school, there was a book that came out called Matrix. And I don't know if you remember that. I don't know if Ruckman talked about that. But there was four volumes of the books of Matrix by Vladimir Valerian and how supposedly he was one of these that worked in these underground bases. And he got all these papers out and he printed them in four volumes. And uh, in those books, he says that the way you can tell a clone is that their right eye is darker than their left eye. 
and that when they go around and they move, they can't move their pinkies for some reason. So they're always doing this number. All right, I'm going to give you a weird story right now. Are you ready for this? <laughs> All right, this is, this is not fact. This is just something we observed that made us scratch our head, okay? So... We, are, we were talking, a friend of mine, and we were talking about all this, and what if clones is so demons can get in, and, and you look at the little alien greys, they only have four fingers. They don't have five. So they start with six fingers, the giants. We have five. Well, they degenerate, because you start messing with DNA, you're making mutants. So they, they say if it's a clone, this finger doesn't work, because those little greys are inside and all this. So I was talking to one of my friends about Jack Van Empey. And uh, one of my friends in Bible school, I said, man, I, I got the book by Jack Van Empey. After I got saved, I started reading it. Man, it was good and it was great. It was the gospel and it's through faith in the blood. And I said, my dad has some old VHS tapes of Jack Van Empey at the end of his programs telling people how to get saved. And so we, we went to the shelf and got some. At the end of the program, he's all like, you want to be saved? You trust the blood of Jesus. I said, man, this is great. And then I flip over and he's live. And so this was like, 20 years before, and now he's live on TV. And I go, well, let's watch this. And we watched this, and his right eye looked a little darker, and he wasn't moving his pinkies. And he got to the end, he says, now ask Jesus in your heart. And my friend and I looked at each other and go, is that the real Jack Van Empey? Where's the blood? <laughs> Did they clone him? And now he's preaching another gospel? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying how weird that he's not saying what he once did. And he's showing all the signs of what this book said. I was like, dude, this is creepy. Isn't it creepy what they can do? So if you ever see Robert Breaker here one day and my eyes darker on one side and I'm going like this and not moving my pinkies and I'm telling you another gospel, then maybe they killed me and now I'm a clone. OK, and just cast the devil out of me. And let me just fall down and hit my head and, and let that whatever die. OK, because that's not me. Amen. But uh, I'm going to preach the blood because that's something that demons hate. They hate the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I've got 10 minutes to finish this up. So I don't have time to get into what an animal is. But do animals have souls? I don't think so. The Bible talks about when an animal dies. An animal has its own spirit, if you will. But Ecclesiastes 3.2 says the spirit of a beast goeth down. So it's got a body and it's got its spirit, but it doesn't have a soul. So that's why we don't go preach the gospel to animals, right? I know it says in the Bible to preach to every creature. But you know it means human beings. It doesn't mean animals. But animals are called beasts, right? So let's go to Revelation chapter 13. I've always wondered... If the Antichrist is going to be a clone. Have you ever thought about that? Now it could be. It could be. Uh, I think maybe when he shows up, maybe he's a real person, but maybe that real person dies and it's the clone that is doing some of this stuff. And it's a clone that the devil is using to get inside of. Because he's called the man of sin, then he's called the son of perdition. So maybe when that deadly wound happens... Maybe that's a clone that rises again. And all the world wonders after the beast. How did he come back? It's actually a clone. It's not really him. Just a thought there. But Revelation chapter 13, notice what he's called. This is so weird. I mean, we're getting into some stuff today, aren't we? <laughs> Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And uh, it says, verse 2, and the beast... He has great authority and all this. Verse 3, And I saw one of the heads, as it were, wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshipped the beast, who is like unto the beast. Why does it keep calling him a beast? Well, a beast sounds like an animal. And does an animal have a soul? So, really, a giant is kind of like a beast, you could say, in a way, because he's got no soul. So the Bible is very clear who he is. Um, he's called the son of perdition in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 3. Well, we have the son of perdition in the time of Jesus. Go over here to John chapter 13. John chapter 13. This is a fun study, isn't it? Boy, I probably lost half of you, but that's okay. <laughs> if you believe your Bible. If I taught this about 10 years ago, people would be like, no. But with everything we're seeing in the world today, you're like, yeah, probably. I mean, do you see how quickly times have changed? Because technology has changed so quickly that they can now go in with this CRISPR and they can do just incredible things as far as clones and stuff. But here's Jesus in John 13 and verse 27, I believe it is. Um, 27 or 37? 27. And after the sop, Satan entered into him. Okay, I forgot to take you to the Last Supper where he says, to whom I give sop. Okay, 
and it's the son of perdition. Funny, SOP, S-O-P, son of perdition. And it just happens to work out in our King James Bible in English. Right. And after the SOP, Satan entered into him, then said Jesus unto him, that thou doest, do quickly. The devil literally entered into, who would the devil be? Well, he's an angel, right? I had this conversation with a friend the other day. Oh, the devil's not an angel. He's the anointed cherub. But he's also an archangel. And it says in the book of 2 Corinthians, he appears as an angel of light. Right. So there's no problem saying that he's some sort of angel. It might be a different class, but he's an angel. So the devil can appear as an angel. So he's a spirit, so he can get in the body of somebody if he wants to. The devil can literally possess someone. Yep. And here we read that he possessed the son of perdition, Judas. Now in Acts chapter 1, verse 25, for sake of time, don't turn there. It says that when he hung himself, he went to his own place. Yep. Was that Judas? Well, if he was a human being, his soul would have gone to hell. So who was going to his own place? It was the devil that was in him going to his own place. He just used him to do what he did to Jesus. And so he's going to do something in the future the same way. The devil's going to possess a man to do something, which is take over the world, sit down, say, I am God, and the world worship him as God. And that's what the devil's always wanted, to be worshipped as God. God's the creator. He says, well, I'm going to create too. But he had to procreate, had to do something filthy and dirty and nasty and, and sin and fornication to make his corrupt stuff. So, the Shroud of Turin. You ever heard of the Shroud of Turin? All these people say, that's really Jesus. Well, it is a very strange thing because it's a pattern of a human body in, in cloth. And people are like, how did that get there? Because there's no, it's not painted. It's like it just... And then there it was. It's almost like, remember the atom bomb goes off in Hiroshima and then it left like a shadow or something on the wall of a person? It's almost like that's what that is. So people say, well, that's Jesus. And I read sometimes years ago, they said they're going to try to clone it because there's DNA on it. And I thought to myself, what if it wasn't Jesus? What if it was Judas? What if they could clone the body of Judas over again? What if they did that? So the devil's like, you know, I really like that body. Hold, put that on hold for a little while. I'm going to use that again later, a couple thousand years from now. Wouldn't that, be, I'm, just, I'm just spitballing, I'm just throwing out. I'm not teaching that as fact, but I'm saying, wouldn't that be interesting? With clones and things like that. So the devil wants to do that. Boy, I have a lot more. Oh, I don't even have time. I'm going to have to go quickly to finish this up, all right? What happens to the devil? Revelation 19, we know he ends up down there in the lake of fire with the beast. And the false prophet. So this beast, the reason he's called a beast, personally, I think, is because he's probably cloned. So it's a clone that's doing that. Now, in Noah's day, they were messing with DNA. And in our day, we are seeing something similar. Satan wanted a seed. And he's doing this in making himself a seed. He's manipulating DNA to get himself his own seed. God made man for himself. What does Revelation 4, 4 say at the end? For thy pleasure man was created. So we are created to please God. He made us a certain way and we're to please him. Well, the devil wants to corrupt or hijack man for himself. Please go to YouTube and look up this video. God's name in our DNA, scientist says. Sit that into YouTube. God's name in our DNA, comma, scientist says. And it's uh, only 14, 15 minutes long. All right. It's about this guy who is a Jewish scientist who says he went to the coding of the DNA and he looks at the coding of the DNA and he says there's a repetitive thing in this. And as it repeats, it repeats in a certain pattern. And he says, as a Jew looking at that, it shows me that God's name is in the DNA of human beings. Right? A guy paints a picture like this one on the wall. He signs it. God made us a masterpiece and he signed it in the coding of our DNA. By the way, DNA is coding. Mm -hmm. I don't see how anybody can believe in this outdated theory of evolution right. that says, well, we're just some accident. When you go to true science and you see, no, there's, there's definitely intelligent design because there's a little code there. Yep. Try writing code. You have to do it. It doesn't just wake up one morning, oh, look, my computer, wow, this is awesome. It, that coding just came out of nowhere. No, someone has to write it. Mm -hmm. So we have coding. And so this guy, and I don't have time to get into all of this, but this guy says that in the coding of DNA, there is a every 10, and then every 5, and then every 6, and then every 5. There's a repetition taking place through, through that. And he says if you look at the Hebrew letters, and you look at the letters in Hebrew, the 10th letter is Yod, 
he, and then wa, and then he. And that is, in Hebrew, how you spell the name of the Lord. And of that is where we get Jehovah, right? And there's no vowel points, so we don't know if it's Yahweh. We, we don't even know how to pronounce it. All we know is that's what the Jews call the Tetragrammaton, and that is the name of God. And this Jew says, I look at the DNA code, and I see this repeating pattern, and he says, to me, it spells out that God is the creator of mankind. All right, so the devil is messing with DNA. All right, I want to finish this up right now. We've just got two minutes left, if you don't mind. The devil's name is, guess what the devil's name is? The devil is Lucifer, right? Do you know how you spell Lucifer in Hebrew and how you pronounce it? Pardon my Hebrew, all right? I had a year in uh, Bible school, but here is the name of the devil in Hebrew. And, and my Lamed is ugly, I'm sorry. That is pronounced Hillel. <laughs> Sounds like hell, doesn't it? Where's the devil going to hell? So I did a little math myself, and I tried to figure out the letters of Lucifer and how many times and everything. I'm not going to go there. You can do that. If you're a scientist, though, I'd like to know if when they mess with someone's DNA, if it changes that pattern. Because that's what DNA is, that coding. And I want to know if it changes the name to a different name. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just postulizing a theory here. What if the devil is saying, no, this is my masterpiece. This is my creation. And my name's going into each one of mine. Wouldn't that be amazing? I'm just throwing that out there. I don't have time to get into anything else. I wish I did. I'll close with this. What if Satan is making himself a race of people who are no longer human or as God created them? What if his plan is to produce a race of people? What if he's changing people today and then when they produce children, those children no longer have a soul? And what if the devil is producing a people that cannot be saved because they are just like the early Nephilim? They don't have a soul. Wouldn't that be an interesting thing? I'm not saying he is. I'm saying what if. But do you know what in the Bible, Proverbs chapter 30? We have to, I'm going to take a little more time. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 30. I've got to close with this. There is something in the Bible that has always bothered me, and this is called the cursed generation. And in the book of Proverbs, it talks about there is a generation that is cursed. And it looks like that generation can't be saved. And I've always thought to myself, how on earth God can save anybody? Who is this cursed generation? What if that's who it is? What if the devil is actively trying to produce his corrupt DNA people again? And when those people have babies, they're not what God created with a living soul. They don't have a soul. Look at Proverbs chapter 30. This is what we call the cursed generation. You heard about these kids being born today that have black eyes? I'm not going there, but isn't that kind of creepy? Got to wonder. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 9 through 14. Proverbs 30. Verse 9. Now, I want to go to verse 9 because I want to back up in the context, okay? We're, we're, we're literally really wanting to start in verse 11 because it talks about this generation. But I had to go back in verse 9 because the context was amazing. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, Who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and steal and take the name of my God in vain. What an interesting context of about what we're reading. Someone stealing the name of God. Could it be the name in the DNA? That's just a context. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. 11. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. With all we looked at today, if you're a clone, you wouldn't know your mother or father, so you curse them. You don't care. I don't know who they are. And that doesn't it kind of tie together? <laughs> there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet it is not washed from their filthiness, because they were bred of corruption. There is a generation of how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up. Something to do with their eyes. You'll know them by their eyes. Black eyes? I don't know. I'm just, like I said, this is a great big what if, you know, but also it's, hmm, connecting the dots. There is a generation, now watch this. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives. Something about their teeth. By the way, these people that had six fingers and six toes, they also found that they had two lines of teeth on top, two lines of teeth on the bottom. That is weird. The giants did. And then it says, to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. They want to devour, they want to eat people. There was an old TV show called V. 
that I watched in the 1980s. They were lizard people and they wanted to eat people, wanted to devour. But the giants wanted to eat people. Are we seeing a repeat of Genesis 6? Look, mic drop, you know, I'm done. Are are we seeing a repeat of Genesis chapter 6? Is the devil doing what he did in the beginning and here we are toward the end? And is he producing more Nephilim? But, But... is he producing them in a way that they're, they're still coming from the DNA of man, but they're still... Is he producing a soulless group of people, a soulless generation that is going to just start eating people? I'm glad the rapture's coming because I don't want to see, you know? Happy Halloween, hey man, how about that, Hollywood? Um, make a video about that. Make a horror movie about the little black-eyed children eating people that the devil's manipulated. I want the rights to that, by the way. So when you make the money, you send it to me. Amen. But I'm just saying, what a crazy world we live in. Truth is stranger than fiction. And the worst that we could sit around and think that the world will be under the devil, it's probably going to be 100 times worse than that. Our brains just really can't even fathom what the devil's going to do. And I really believe there'll be cannibalism during the tribulation. And I really believe they'll be literally eating people. And it might be those that are doing it. Did y'all enjoy that? Happy Halloween, right? Kind of creepy, but it had to be said. And let me just close with the gospel. The only way to counter all this is the blood of Jesus Christ. That's the only thing that can save us. The spirit world hates the blood of Jesus. The physical world hates Jesus. So trust the blood and then you go to heaven. Because at the rapture, it says corruption is made in corruption. So the rapture is the only thing that will give us a glorified body and the only hope we have. Amen. All right. Thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Amen.